is going on with you guys? The Cali Effect King of Games here. And have you noticed something different? We've actually decided to switch up from the Nipsey Blue to the, the Urgent Red, Hustle Red. I, I don't... But make no mistakes, I will never switch sides on you guys. In this video, we're going to be giving you cards you should buy before they skyrocket in price. The 2020 Mega Tens is a huge 250 card set, meaning that if you buy a case at MSRP of $240, you are likely to pull one or two of particular cards. Players have not been taking full advantage of that knowledge. Some cards are an upgraded rarity, but way cheaper than they should be, and in this video, I'm going to expose them. Make no mistake, this video isn't all about the 2020 Mega Tens. There are also going to be some really good Yu-Gi-Oh cards that we are going to talk about, and while we're here, I want you to post down below in the comment section which cards did I miss. Are there some super good cards that we should be looking at before they skyrocket in price? Who knows, I just might bite 20 of them and put it on a video. So without further ado, I present to you some cards that you should buy before they skyrocket in price. It's gonna be some really good values in here. The first card we are going to talk about is a card that I flew all the way to LA just to get a copy of. I almost didn't get a copy of this card too, so man, that, that would have been a terrible trip. IP Masquerina made its debut in the Chaos Impact set at about a $50 card for an ultra rare. It does also have a Starlight Rare. I can't remember its exact value at the time it came out, but I probably should have picked up a copy. Currently, ultra rare IP Masquerina is $12 and the Starlight Rare is $800. Like, that's, that's a lot of money. That's like a PS5, a blunt wrap, a PS4, cigarettes, and everything else. Like, come on now. The ridiculous Starlight Rare price tag is not what I'm telling anyone to buy. I don't even got a copy and I ain't planning on buying one. Nor is the Ultra Rare. It's actually the cheaper version of IP Masquerina, the higher end version of IP Masquerina when it comes to rarity. The prismatic secret version of IP Masquerina is $8. You're telling me there's a time where there is a cheaper card that's in a higher rarity and we have not bought it? <sighs> Let's also factor in that when you open a case of the 2020 Mega Tens, you only get 12 Prismatic Secrets, so there is a pretty big chance you won't pull any IP Masqueranas at all. It's not that IP Masquerina is short printed or anything, it's the fact that the 2020 Mega Tens feels like the dark beginning set. And with a price tag of $8 for a higher rarity card that is harder to get, you probably should pick up IP Masqueranas before it's too late. Moving away from the 2020 Mega Tens and towards a card that I don't even think Muhammad Ali would want to box with. We're talking about Sinju of 1,000 hands. This guy got 1,000 hands, like 1,000 hands. Imagine how much a pedicure is. Sinju of 1,000 hands currently sees zero competitive play and has quite the few printings. So you might actually look at me and scratch your head and probably say, why even look at this card? While well, ritual decks are always on the come up, Konami seems to be infatuated with a mechanic that has like one competitive deck and soon enough, they'll break the competitive strategy or the competitive mechanic again. Sinju of 1000 Hand currently sits at 1000 pennies per copy, which is kind of outrageous for a card that sees no competitive play, but you also have to factor in the ritual mechanic. The ever so fluctuating ritual decks do need cards like Sinju to compete, and this is the highest rarity version. If you want to check out a current competitive ritual deck, I actually made Megaliths. They're very good, and guess what they run? Sinju of 1000 hands, never would have guessed, right? I can see super rare copies of Sinju of 1000 hands sitting around that $30 price tag, and I can see players weeping because they didn't invest in speed duels, which, I mean, I can't really blame them, but at the same time, didn't take advantage of this card when it was cheap. Moving away from the boxing ring or the manicure business or whatever Sinju wants to do because that man got 1k hands. Pot of Extravagance is another 2020 Mega 10 card that makes no sense. We're gonna ignore the original Pot of Extravagance from the Secret Rare set because that's not even the most expensive copy or the highest rarity. The Chaos Rare version of Pot of Extravagance sits at about $100, the Ultra Rare copies sit at $18, and the Prismatic Secrets sit at $17 a pop. Now, if I can remember correctly, there was a point in time where players complained that Pot of Extravagance was way too expensive 
and they couldn't use it in the rogue decks because it cost them around $300 for a playset. But now, oh, how the tides have turned. Three copies of Pot of Extravagance Prismatic Secret will run you about $41. That is extremely cheap. You have to be ignorant to pass up on this deal. Extravagances have the potential to hit a $30 price tag for both the Prismatic Secret and the Ultra Rare and the Chaos Rares. Seriously, the sky is a limit with collectors. Chaos, whatever rares they want to call them, they can be $150 plus. Moving away from high-end money moves, we're going to pick on a card that is five years old, is starting to see competitive play, and like I said, is really, really good. Cyphering Lord Zeta made his debut in the High Speed Rider set, and it was overlooked for cards like Cyframe Gear Gamma and Cyframe Lord Omega. Both of those cards have amazing effects, but Zeta is starting to blossom as a recent. What Zeta does is that you can target one special summon monster on the field, banish Zeta and this card until the end of the next turn, just like Omega except for cards on the field. Also, Zeta can shuffle itself back from the graveyard into the extra deck by returning a Cyframe card from your graveyard to your hand. So if you've already used the effect of Cyframe Gear Gamma and have a Cyframe Zeta in your graveyard, you can get another Gamma to your hand. This card is really good. I'm no psychic, but I can see the framework of a card that can be a lord amongst the level seven synchro monsters. <sighs> you, can't, you, you can't escape from my puns. You must live in them. You must cherish them. They reside in you. Currently, Zeta is $1 for a card that has no other printings and is five years old and is starting to see competitive play. I can see Cyframe Lord Zeta at the $5 price tag just because it's cool. Picking back on the Mega 10 2020, there was a card that has seen competitive success, kind of fell off the map, and now is waiting to be reinvigorated. Crackdown is an amazing card, allowing you to basically snatch steal an opponent's ball. Monster. The super rare copies of Crackdown from the Dark Neil Storm are nice, but not exactly what we're looking for. The prismatic versions from the 2020 Mega 10 sit roughly under $2. Now, if you remember, I did say getting a prismatic inside of a case, you get 12 prismatics. So imagine fighting for Crackdowns and IP Masqueranas and then getting bad prismatic cards you're not gonna get everything that you want. Crackdown is already starting the trend on the up because players are starting to realize that this is a 250 card set. This is definitely gonna be a card that you are gonna wanna pick up before it's too late. Now I do have two cards left that you guys should be looking at. The first card is from Structure Deck Pendulum Domination and DD Lamia. DD Lamia is a card that's for the DD strategy as it suggests, but actually allows you to special summon itself to the side of the field by sending a contract card that you control from your field to the graveyard. Kali, why would I ever want to play contract cards? Well, there is a contract card that allows you to surge DD Lamia, meaning that Lamia itself can be a free level one tutor monster to your side of the field. Now, I know what you're probably thinking, Jet Synchron does it better. Uh, technically, no. DD Lamia can special summon itself to the side of the field. It doesn't need to be normal summoned. It also is free monsters for your Hot Fibrix combo. You can decide to normal summon, make the Link Kribo, and then special summon it by sending the contract to your graveyard. So it's a little bit more versatile. Currently, there are limited copies of DD Lamia for about $2. I can see DD Lamia skyrocketing to that $5 price range once players start to value their normal summon again or Jet Synchron gets hit on the Forbidden List. As of making this video, I have no idea when the Forbidden List is coming out. If it comes out today when this video is supposed to be uploaded, yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna be happy. And the last card on this list isn't a card that you should buy before it skyrockets in price, but it would be nice if the community came together and made this card skyrocket in price as a tribute to the Black Panther. Test Panther is a card that is in the 2020 Mega Tens as a super rare. And to be real with you, growing up, I didn't have too many superheroes that I looked up to. There was the Green Lantern, there was Static Shock, and eventually the Black Panther. My first time seeing Black Panther was in X-Men. It was Storm's wife, and I hated him because Storm was a bad bitch. But over time, I have grown to love the Black Panther and what Chad has done with the character 
has been nothing less of amazing. Well, those are some of the cars that I have that you should buy before they skyrocket in price. If you are buying on TCG Player, then I strongly suggest you use, actually, I'm not even suggesting, use my fucking TCG Player link every time because it helps us get stuff like this. This is really good for sound quality. If you guys wanna check out some more awesome videos, then go ahead and check these two out. But as always, I hope you are having a great day and I catch you on the next video.